Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you how to use Grid and Flexbox to lay out a real life page. So something you would actually use in production. You'll notice here it's just got kind of the metadata up top, including an image, a shareable section down here that you can click on, and then it's got a sidebar, the main article content, and the author's bio. So it's not a complex page, but there's a lot of little moving parts, especially once we start snapping down to smaller versions. Now you can go ahead and play around with this yourself. Uh, you'll see the link in the description. You can also see it here up on my website if you want to see this in real life. I'll show you what it looks like at a smaller screen size. You'll notice as we get a little bit smaller, eventually those items snap up here and they lose the, te the text itself and just retain the icons. And then eventually the image goes full screen like that. These stay the same for now, but once we get a little bit smaller, they snap down. This changes to be center layout. These go next to each other. And then finally on mobile, it gets small enough that these snap as well and all stack up just like this. I'm going to be working loosely off this Figma that I based this off of. I, I, I designed this as well. And so I'm not going to be super picky with it because I came up with it. So I can change it if I want. But it is good practice, generally speaking, to be able to take a layout and match it pixel by pixel uh, in your development. But for now, since I did this myself, I might be a little fluid as we fix this, but it generally looks the same. Now, as we move throughout here, you'll notice that there's several sections here. And I, I like to look at it both on mobile and desktop to then figure out how I'm going to lay this out. So there's different sections here. I think what I'm going to do is count these three up here as one section. These two together as one section, we'll just use Flexbox and wrap, reverse that. This whole section here, including the author, will be one section. And then finally, this sidebar will be its own section that kind of snaps when it needs to, both down below everything and then off to the side as well. So these are kind of the sections we're going to work with, and I'm going to start with a mobile design first, and then we'll expand up to the desktop. Now today, we're just going to look at the HTML. If you want to follow along, there is a link in the description to a repo, and you can go and grab these images and kind of get started with me. But today, looking just at the HTML, let's go ahead and jump into the project. And I've got just a blank HTML page open here. We're going to start by just expanding out the kind of boilerplate template that Emmett gives you automatically. We'll call this blog post layout. Now we're not hooking up the CSS yet, but just because it's good practice, I'm going to go ahead and add it now so I don't forget later. So I'm going to link the CSS and we'll just call it style.css. And I don't actually think we've added it here, so let me do that, style.css. Okay, cool. All right, now it's going to look pretty ugly to start with, but that's okay. We'll kind of uh, fix it as we go here. I'm going to add a div with the class of container. And inside here is where we're going to put all the code for the entire uh, blog post page. So we've got several sections here. The first section is that top section. If we go back to the design here, just this section here, it's got these three things. So I'm going to add those one after the other here. We'll add it as a header and we'll give it a class of metadata. All right, next we're going to have a link tag and we're going to add a class of badge and then a class of category as well. And we'll call it health food. Next, we've got an H1 here, and I'm going to add in here uh, five super fruits for runners. I don't know. That's probably a thing, uh, but it sounds uh, like a blog post. We'll come in here, and we're going to add a class of capitalized. I'm just showing you how you can create utility classes and use those throughout your site so you're not constantly redeclaring the same properties and things in CSS. And uh, inside here, we're going to have a small tag, and that will have the text of September 14. Uh, John Doe. And I'll expand that out. And if I save, everything should populate over this way. And you'll notice because I added this small tag, the text itself is already small. All right, if we head back here, the, the next section is uh, this uh, social sharing icons and then this image itself. So we're going to add those together in the same thing. And we're just going to add it uh, into a div that we're going to give a class of share. First of all, we've got that image with the class of share uh, image. I'm going to give this a source of image. And then let's see, we've got our header there. And we'll just call this uh, oranges or something like that, because that's kind of what the image is. Next, we're going to add those three icons. We're going to add them into a div called share uh, social. I expand this out here. And now we're going to have three link tags, because these would be linking to something. And uh, we're going to give them all a class of uh, social card. For now, they're not going to point to anything, but inside of here, we're going to add two things to each of these. We're going to add an SVG, and then we're going to add a span. 
Let's add the span first. This will have a class of uh, social text. I don't know that I would name all these exactly this, but it is what it is right now. Uh, this is just how I built it out when I uh, first kind of came up with this blog post. If I save it here, you see that shows up, but we do need to go ahead and grab an SVG. What I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to grab uh, Phosphor Icons, which I've used before in my programs. But basically, come over here and we're going to grab Twitter and we're going to grab it as a, let's see, let's do fill. And then we're going to go ahead and grab this and just copy the SVG and jump it over this way. There's a couple things we need to fix. Uh, one will be we're going to change this width and height here to 25. We don't want it to be bigger than that. And next, we'll add a class of social uh, image like that. And then I think that's all I'm going to do. Oh, let's see. Let's change this fill uh, to current color. And I'll show you why we're going to do that later. All right, I'm going to do the same thing for each of these, except I'm going to grab the Facebook one and then the email one and uh, change this span tag to read the right thing. So let me do that quickly and I'll be right with you. And you can do the same thing going to Phosphor Icons yourself. All right, welcome back. I've gone ahead and grabbed all of those. If I jump over this way, you'll notice two things. First of all, I didn't change the width and the height. And if you forget to do that, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be huge. So I'll come in here, and that reminds me to change this to 25. And then next, you'll notice I left the fill here at 000, rather than changing it to current color like the other ones. Now you'll notice what happens here is it keeps this dark color, even though the link itself is blue. But these actually grab the styling from the parent, which is the link tag itself. So they actually fill with that blue color that the link gets. So that's what it's doing here. Let me go ahead and change this then. If I go current color, now whenever we change the, the color of the link, it'll actually change the color of the SVG as well, which is why we've done them in line like this. Okay, so we've got about half the page built out here. Let's jump down here and let's see, below this div, so you've got with this one container div out here. So inside the container, we're going to add an article. And this is just the article tag. And inside here, we're going to have a div with a class of article uh, content, like that. Let me scroll down here. We're going to add text in here, just like somebody would write in a blog post. And it'd probably be inside a paragraph tag like this. And then maybe something like, I don't know, lorem30 uh, gives us this kind of filler text. And then I can just copy this down several times on a Mac here by holding Option Shift and the down arrow like this and expand that out several times. I think it's Control Shift and the uh, down arrow on a PC, not really sure. Next, I want to go ahead and grab that H2 we're going to add here just for styling purposes to see what it would look like and say article uh, sub, let's see, we should probably have space here, sub header, something like that. Okay, and then let me go ahead and grab one more of these paragraphs and move this down this way, copy a few more down, and we're going to call that good for the article itself. So outside this article tag, we're going to add one more, and this will be an aside tag because it's not the main content itself. We probably should have added a main on that outside container div uh, as well, but then that would go around this aside tag, so maybe not. There's there uh, Usually you have a main, which is where your main content lives, and then an aside for things that aren't super crucial to the page itself. And these are just links and things like that. So I'd come in here and say, we want a class of uh, sidebar is what we're going to call this. And in here, we'll have two sections. We're going to have a sidebar tags. That'll just be a div called sidebar uh, tags like this. And we'll have a few things here, a paragraph, uh, which will have a class of H3. And I'll, I'll explain that later. Uh, we're doing that so we don't have to add this as an H3 as far as the semantic markup, but we can still style it as an H3. And this will say article uh, tags just like that. And then below here, we're going to have a div called tags, let's see, container. And then each of these will be a link with a class of uh, badge, just like up top, except this time they'll have the class of tag as well. And then we're going to name this like super fruits or something like that. Okay. And then again, those won't point to anything. Let me copy uh, three more down and we're going to change some of these out. Let's see, this text will be uh, snacks. This one will be uh, running. This one will be exercise. So if I save it and come down this way, you'll notice I've got these uh, tags listed out here and the article tags header. Now, in addition to this sidebar tags, we've also got the sidebar related, which are related posts. So I'll come in here and I'm going to change this to sidebar related. And here, of course, this won't be article tags. This will be related or other related uh, posts is what we've got that saying. And this class won't say tags container, it will say related post container. 
And then I'm going to get rid of all of these uh, link tags, and we're going to add inside of here for each of the related posts a div called related uh, post, like that. Now inside here, we're going to have an H4. Inside the H4 will be a link tag, and then we'll add whatever text. In this case, we'll start with uh, 10 top exercises for runners. And again, this won't point anywhere. It's a good practice that whenever you have a block element like an H4, that you don't put that a link tag on the outside of it, but rather on the inside like this. So inlines go inside of block elements, and that's what we've done here. The other element there was who wrote it and what time or what date they published this post on. So we come in here, we're going to have a paragraph tag with the class again of capitalized like that. And then inside here, we'll have September 1st, Jim Warnath. So that'll be the first post. Let me copy this down two more times because we've got two more related posts. And I'm just going to come in here and change out the text here uh, for the next two. So we've got three protein smoothie recipes and a date there. And then uh, let's see, active stretch routines for sprinters and a date and author there like that. All right, perfect. So if I save it here, you'll see that everything pulls up like this. And now we've got all the stuff ready to be able to style it with CSS. That's what we're going to do next time. So if you're interested in seeing this, how this plays out, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to help the channel, go ahead and leave a like. That'll be a big help to me. And if you have questions, leave a comment in the description. Thanks so much. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.